Okay, um, good afternoon. We're gonna get started now. And uh, to start off, uh, as, as you're aware, uh, right now some of your colleagues are down the hall. Uh, that's because the Secretary General's Special Representative for Colombia and head of the UN mission there, Carlos Ruiz Massieu, briefed the Security Council this morning on the latest developments in the peace process. He talked about his recent visit to the country and his meeting with women leaders and victims of violence. And after I'm done, he will join us here in person to tell you more about it. And yesterday afternoon, the Secretary General met with the Vice President and Minister for Foreign Affairs of Colombia, Marta Luisa Ramirez. He reaffirmed the UN support for peace and sustainable development in Colombia and its pandemic recovery efforts. They discussed the importance of the comprehensive implementation of the final peace agreement and the Secretary General also acknowledged Colombia's generosity in granting temporary protected status to Venezuelan migrants and refugees. Uh, the Deputy Secretary General, Amina Mohammed also met with Vice President Ramirez. They discussed, among other things, Colombia's leadership in promoting and implementing the Sustainable Development Goals. The Deputy Secretary General welcomed the Vice President and Foreign Minister's role in people-focused and green recovery from COVID-19 and in promoting women's empowerment. Henrietta Four, UNICEF's executive director, has informed the Secretary General of her intention to resign to devote herself to a family health issue. The Secretary General fully understands her decision as, and has accepted it with deep regret. He extends his thanks and his best wishes to Executive Director Four and her family. The Secretary General wishes to express a sincere appreciation to Ms. Four for him, her inspiring leadership of UNICEF and for her service to improve the lives of children all around the world. In particular, he noted UNICEF's critical role in the global response to COVID-19 and in reimagining re education. As a result of her leadership, UNICEF is now an organization with a broader array of public and private sector partnerships and a bolder focus on achieving the sustainable development goals. She also has contributed enormously to efforts to build a UN system with a much stronger focus on inclusion and organizational culture. The Secretary General thanks Ms. Four for her outstanding work to address the extraordinary changes facing children and young people around the world. Ms. Ford took up the position of UNICEF Executive Director on the 1st of January 2018 and will remain in her post until her successor is appointed. The Secretary General addressed the high-level political forum of the Economic and Social Council this morning, and he warned that the pandemic has taken 4 million lives and devastated the global economy. And while some countries plan for recovery, the pandemic is gathering pace in others. He noted that global GDP decreased by an estimated 4.6% in 2020, and that the pandemic has pushed a further 124 million people into extreme poverty. Nearly one person in three around the world could not access adequate food in 2020, an increase of nearly 320 million people in one year, he added. Rather than progress, the Secretary General warned, we are moving farther away from our goals. But he added that we can and must turn this around. First, he said, everyone, everywhere, must have access to COVID-19 vaccines, tests, treatments, and support. Second, we need urgent, ambitious climate action, including on finance. Third, we must heed the lessons of this crisis and invest in more equal and inclusive societies. Fourth, and the underpinning, and underpinning progress in these three areas is financing for development, he said. The Secretary General's remarks are available online. You may have seen that in a tweet last night, the Secretary General called for an end to the violence in the Central African Republic. As the humanitarian crisis continues to worsen, he wrote, aid workers need safe and unimpeded access to the population. He also called for more funding to meet the acute humanitarian needs of people in the country. Turning to Ethiopia, in a statement issued today, the UN High Commissioner for Refugees, Filippo Grandi, said he is extremely concerned about the conditions of Eritrean refugees in the Tigray region of Ethiopia. He noted that since the outbreak of hostilities in November 2020, they've been caught up between warring groups Two refugee camps have been completely destroyed, and tens of thousands of Eritrean refugees have been forced to flee, yet again, for their lives. Mr. Grandi stressed that the violence and intimidation of Eritrean refugees must stop. He emphasized that UNHCR calls on all parties to not only comply with their international legal obligations, including the protection of civilians, but also to stop using and manipulating refugees to score political points. The full statement is available online on UNHCR's website. From Myanmar, our colleagues there today say they are concerned about the impact of the current political and economic instability on people's food security due to job losses, 
increased food prices, and currency depreciation. The situation could worsen with impeding the impending monsoon season, putting pressure on infrastructure and transport, together with disruptions to food banking services, not to mention the continued fighting in the country. The Food and Agriculture Organization say, says millions of people in Myanmar are expected to become hungry over the next six months, with food insecurity predicted to rise sharply and plunge sections of the population into a food crisis. We and our partners are working to address this through emergency food deliveries, support to farmers, and food security programs targeting both newly displaced people and vulnerable rural host families. The UN Refugee Agency today warned of a looming humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan as the escalating conflict brings increased human, human suffering and civilian displacement. According to UNHCR, an estimated 270,000 Afghans have been newly displaced inside the country since January 2021, primarily due to insecurity and violence. This brings the total uprooted population to more than 3.5 million. The UN Refugee Agency said that the needs of those who have had to flee suddenly are acute. UNHCR and partners, as part of a coordinated response, are assisting newly displaced Afghans with emergency shelter, food, health, water and sanitation support, and cash assistance, despite challenges in, in accessing vulnerable groups. UNHCR warns that a failure to reach a peace agreement in Afghanistan and stem the current violence will lead to further displacement within the country, as well as to neighboring countries and beyond. And I have a COVAX update for you today from Moldova, which yesterday received more than 150,000 doses of COVID-19 vaccines. Yesterday's delivery is part of the half a million doses expected to arrive in the country through COVAX as a donation from the United States. To date, Moldova has received more than 380,000 doses from COVAX. The UN team in Moldova, read by, led by resident coordinator Simon Springett, has supported the national vac vaccination campaign since its launch in February 2021. Around 12% of the country's 2.6 million people have been fully vaccinated. A recent survey by the World Health Organization and authorities found that nearly 60% of people in Moldova are willing to be vaccinated against COVID-19, compared to just 31% last November. And the UN Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, the UN Children's Fund, the World Bank, and the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development today released a report showing that one in three countries are not taking action to help students catch up on their learning post-COVID-19 school closures. According to the report, fewer than a third of low and middle income countries reported that all students had returned to in-person schooling, heightening their risk of learning loss and dropout. The report stressed that these findings reinforce the importance of reopening schools, remedial learning, and more effective remote learning systems that can better withstand future crises and reach all students. And there's more information online. And uh, so at this point, I'll turn uh, to your questions. Yes, uh, Celia. Uh, Fahan, the European Union has banned people from some country who got the AstraZeneca vaccine to enter into the European uh, Union country. Or uh, I saw that this vaccine was uh, you know, recognized by WHO. So how are we going to go from there if all vaccines are not recognized equal? Well, we certainly hope that uh, different member states around the world recognize the rec recommendations of the World Health Organization. Uh, the World Health Organization has spoken uh, out on uh, the safety and reliability of the AstraZeneca vaccine. Uh, as you know, the United Nations has included AstraZeneca vaccines among its uh, COVAX deliveries. And, uh, and we, uh, of course, we do not make policy for the member states, and, and we respect their right to make those policies. But we certainly hope that they uh, can uh, take into account uh, and act on the recommendations of the World Health Organization. Um, and we turn over to Evelyn from the screen. Yes, thank you, Farhan. Uh, Moldova, what kind of vaccine did they get? Do you know? What flavor? They got Johnson and I can't hear you. They got the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. I see. With the warning? Uh, 
everyone, uh, yeah, everyone who gets the vaccines uh, gets the various recommendations that are, are with them in terms of the people who are distributing these and, and uh, performing vaccinations. Okay, secondly, on Cuba, what is the UN staff doing? What has it done? Does it bring in food? Does it bring in supplies? Uh, does it go with vaccination? What does it do? Well, the, the, the UN has been helping with a number of things, in, including... Uh, our normal uh, uh, support for the economic and social programs uh, on the ground uh, in in Cuba. Uh, I'm not aware that we've been requested to help with uh, with any uh, COVID-19 vaccination at this point. And Sorry, what is it exactly that they do? I, I missed. Well, we have a country team there that just so, so, that provides support uh, in terms of the work of the various agencies, funds, and programs, as well as support for uh, you know for our. Uh, social and economic uh, efforts on the ground. Uh, with all such countries, we help uh, promoting sustainable development goals and uh, with projects along those lines. Uh, uh, as, like I said, uh, I don't believe we're required, uh, we're, uh, we've been requested to do any vaccination efforts. Uh, and with that, uh, Iftikhar. Uh, thank you, Farhan. <laughs> in view of the deteriorating situation in Afghanistan, and you spoke about it in your opening remarks, uh, and the fact that uh, some agents, uh, some embassies like the United States are even downgrading their staff. Uh, uh, what is the UN doing? Uh, is it taking special steps to boost security around its offices in Afghanistan? Uh, I, w I wouldn't comment on our security preparations. Of course, we do a d a planning for different eventualities. Uh, but regarding that, uh, our, our main work is focused on doing what we can to ensure that uh, negotiations go ahead and that, uh, and that we can have uh, an agreement among the parties in Afghanistan on a peaceful resolution uh, to the conflict. And uh, so both uh, Jean Arnaud in his capacity as envoy and Deborah Lyons in her capacity as special representative are working on that. And uh, along those lines, by the way, we do expect to have uh, possibly by Thursday a briefing for you from our um, our uh, humanitarian coordinator on the ground in Afghanistan. And we're trying to set that up right now. OK, uh, Thank thanks. Uh, Abdul Hamid. Uh, thank you, Farhan. I have two questions. First, uh, with the spread of Delta variant uh, virus, is the UN doing anything in as uh, preventive measures in case this uh, virus spread out as uh, some areas in the US are sounding the alarm, including my state in New Jersey? Your state and my state, alas. But um, we, uh, we're, we're taking uh, uh, steps to monitor the situation. If we feel that there is any need to adjust uh, the current uh, policies that we've been having, uh, including the, the advice given to staff, as well as the policy for the gradual reopening of headquarters, we will take things into account as things develop. Right now, we can continue to be on track uh, 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 and, uh, and continue to be gradually reopening the building. Uh, what, what's your next question? Yeah, my, my second question, I raised this before, Farhan. As you know, the, the Palestinian Authority had arrested a number of uh, Palestinian activists and uh, demonstrators who went to the street after the assassination of Nizar Banat. And I asked if uh, Mr. Winston had raised this issue with, the, with any official among the Palestinian Authority. And I still ask with the same question. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Venisland has been relating all of our various uh, uh, human rights concerns with uh, with his interlocutors on the ground, and that's as much as detail as I can give on that at the moment. Um, uh, is is Nikos there for, uh, uh, for a question? Uh, yes, I see your hand. Nikos, over to you. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear everything okay? Yeah, yeah thank great. you. Thank you, Fuhan. Uh My question is on Cyprus. Uh, in fact, the president of the Republic of Cyprus, Mr. Anastasiadis, he stated that he was expecting the Secretary General to be clearer regarding his statements on Famagusta and on other issues relating to Cyprus. He also added that this diplomatic way of inacceptable facts must stop. This way, this diplomatic way, unfortunately, what President Anastasiadis added is often taken as 
tolerance. This is in fact a doubt on how the Secretary, the Secretary General actions on Cyprus. And I would really appreciate to have your response. How would you respond to that? Uh, well, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't have any response to the overall comment. But uh, but regarding the question uh, that you raised of, of Famagusta or Verosha, as it is also known, uh, the status of uh, of Verosha is unchanged. Uh, this and of course the the status of Verosha is as it was spelled out in the resolutions of the Security Council, and also of course in uh, the reports of the Secretary General on uh, on Cyprus. And. Uh, Thanks. And with that, I'll turn over to our guest who is uh, waiting for us, Carlos Ruiz Massio.